today's video I want to discuss photographing your hometown and why I think it's a good idea. And this video came about after a few UK based people got in touch with me about staying motivated and inspired during a lockdown as we've just gone into our second lockdown here in the UK. And to be honest, I'm the first to admit I often struggle with motivation if you can't travel. At the moment, we're not allowed to travel or encouraged not to travel on public transport. And as much as I can drive, I don't have a car. So my radius is very small. It's all whatever is in walking distance. But I really do think photographing your hometown is a great way to build your skills. So I've written down my top five reasons why you should do it. So number one, it makes you work for it. So this all comes down to feeling sort of desensitized to your environment. And it's fair to say I can really relate to this feeling. I'm currently living in Brighton, which is my hometown. I've moved away a few times, lived in different countries, but I've been back here now for the last, I think, two and a half, three years. So everything kind of feels like second nature to me. I grew up here. I kind of feel like I've walked like every street there is to walk. And I know I'm pretty lucky with that because it's a pretty sizable city. There's about a quarter of a million population. And there is generally not in lockdown a lot of things to do but even so i feel like i've done most of them but that's not necessarily a bad thing it's sort of about retraining your eye and looking for something different so normally i shoot documentary street scenes but at the moment i've been going for more sort of details and i've mentioned this in a previous video that i've been aiming for capturing those small little moments so i took one in a recent video of someone holding a shopping bag or like a dog in a shop window and actually that's already changed things for me. If I ever put together a series of street imagery, now at least a few of them or a good proportion of them would be small details rather than your stereotypical sort of street scenes. So it's really worked for me. But like if you're into architecture, you could give portraits of strangers a go. I mean, at a safe distance, but you could just give something completely different a go. If you've never done night photography, try a bit of night photography. But you could also stick to what you know and build on that. And as much as if you're used to the area or you live in a very small community, which I have in the past and found it really hard, just go for it. Your hit rate may be a bit lower of good photographs. I've definitely found that. But actually the good photographs I do get, I actually like them just as much, if not more than photographs I've taken in bigger cities because I've had to work for it and really look for like that nice bit of light shining through a building or those small little details. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It can just take longer to get up to where you want. But if you are surrounded by sort of mundanity in your hometown and where you currently live, and I think a lot of people really feel like that this year, you could always give practicing a go. So practice your storytelling or creating a narrative with a set of images. And if you don't want to go outside, you could turn the camera inside. You could literally be in your home, in your hometown, photographing your family, your friends or your housemates. Next up, aside from your camera, which could be anything from a Mamiya to a smartphone, you don't need any resources or to spend any money. My two biggest passions is travel and film photography, but both come at quite a cost. And sometimes it's really hard to justify it. So at the moment, for the last sort of three, four weeks on my way to and from work, I've just been taking photos on my phone. And um, it's a relatively new phone. I'm terrible phone to Samsung, I think. Um, yeah, Samsung, got my notes down there. <laughs> I've been really enjoying it. I've just been focusing on neon signs at night and the way the light bounces off the road. Nothing revolutionary. And to be honest, the images aren't going to have a life past social media. But for me, that's not really the point. I've really enjoyed it and it's made the 45 minute walk to work like almost bearable. I always look forward to it. So the end goal doesn't have to be to create a project. It can be just to keep creating. Next comes from something one of my university lecturers told me. He marks everyone's graduate projects. And he said, the best projects he sees are the ones taken on people's doorsteps, not when they've traveled afar to find something more interesting. And that's because you know the place like no other, you know it like the back of your hand, and you've got the best tools to uncover a brilliant story or a great idea. And whilst I am guilty of traveling for photography, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Some of my favorite photo books and bodies of work have come from the photographer photographing their hometown. From, you know, one of the photography greats on YouTube, Matt Dave, photographing Chilla Coffee, where he lives, to William Eggleston, one of my absolute favourite photographers. Photographing his hometown of Memphis on these beautiful colour images. And then Julie Blackman, who stages these brilliantly sentimental and humorous images with her children in her small Missouri town. Often when we're travelling, we only have time to really scratch the surface, and while that can create some really awesome images, when you're back in your hometown where you live, you've got more time and resources to really delve deeper and, you know, uncover a really great story. Number four, Photographing is documenting. 
No one is best placed to tell the story of how your town changes, for better or worse, than you. In 30 years time when the area has changed, your photographs can tell the story. You can be the author of your hometown. I love looking through old photos of Brighton and I even used them in an old school project. Brighton has changed a lot over the last 50 years and I love working out where these old photographs were taken. And as it's my hometown, I feel like I am one of the people who's best placed to tell the story. And if you want to try and make a little bit of passive income, you could document with the intention of creating some stock photography. And I actually made a video on stock photography basics, which I'll link down below. Now, last up, you have connections, whether it's to a place or people. Get in touch with your auntie's cousin's best friend who owns that cool building you walk past every day to work and would love to photograph. Get in touch with that person you went to school with and would love them to model for you. Use your local knowledge to create the ideas and use your connections to execute them. And if you are stuck for motivation, which I think a lot of us are, I've got a few extra tips. The best way for me to stay motivated to get outside, even if it's horrible and rainy and looks awful, is to create a challenge. And it could be anything from take a photograph, photograph every day, to photographing the moon every night, or doing street photography, but only photographing people wearing hats, something like that. You don't necessarily only have to shoot these things, but they do give you the motivation to get out there in the first place. And if you do struggle to come up with some challenges, it's not a problem, some people are better at it than others, then The Photographer's Playbook is a book I would strongly recommend. It's a book filled with assignments set by photography professionals from all around the world, and I've actually made a few videos on it on this channel, which I'll link down below. And if you want to watch another video about photographing your hometown, then I would strongly recommend Sam Holt's Your Hometown Isn't Boring. If you don't know him, Sam runs his own photography channel, mainly shooting digital, but he also covers a lot of theory, and I think a lot of you will enjoy his content. So that is it for this video. I hope if you're struggling for motivation, it might help you out a little bit. And if you could leave down below any tips and tricks you guys have for photographing your hometown or the places you live, and how you kind of stop yourself becoming desensitized to it, especially if you live in a small community. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.